The South African government decided to issue Sukuk uh, for at least the three main reasons. Firstly, to diversify the funding sources and also the investor base. Secondly, um, to set benchmark for the state-owned companies who have massive infrastructure programs that they need to finance. Thirdly, to finance part of our foreign currency commitments. Uh, we do not have a lot of foreign currency commitments, but as part of diversification, we do tap into the different markets, especially markets where we believe we can derive long-term value. Um, and I think Sukuk was identified as, as that kind of market going forward. I think it was, it was very tough. Um, and tough in, in different aspects. I think the first, even before having to issue a request for proposal from the, the banks who ended up being uh, mandated to arrange the transaction. The biggest challenge was ourselves having to understand this product. I mean, it sounds great to just say I'm going to issue as a cook, uh, but the nuances of the market, I think, were tough. Uh, the structure or the model that we use for financing has never required something to have an asset um, or based on an asset. So this particular one was relatively difficult. So we had to get our heads around why do you need an asset to be able to structure this product. So education for the team that was working on the exe on execution, education for stakeholders who needed to give us um, sign off and approval, and also asset identification. Uh, because we don't normally find using assets, we had to now look for asset registers and uh, understand where the assets are sitting, the valuation of the assets. Um, and I think that was part of what made the, the process a bit challenging. The regulation, most of it was dealt with um, initially before we even issued a, a request for proposal from the banks. However, there were certain nuances that you, know, you either had to overlay the structure or you know, had to think about a way of uh, structuring it in a clean manner because you wanted a benchmark that is much cleaner and that investors are able to identify with um, and able to buy into because at the end of the day, you know, it needs a fatwa or a stamp of approval from the Sharia scholars to say, indeed, it does meet the Sharia um, requirements. So I think that process was, was challenging. It should get better. Um, the next time one finds themselves in the market. And I think the learnings could also be transferred to um, the state-owned companies that we've said we're setting benchmarks for. I think the event is very important. I mean, we have participated previously in the event, um, speaking, uh, several speakers. But this year we have gone a step further. We've partnered with, with the conference um, as a strategic partner because we understand the value and the role that we play, especially as the biggest issuer um, in the South African market, but also having played a big role in terms of market development um, to a point where we are seeing South Africa as having one of the most sophisticated market um, infrastructure processes, institutions that, that are sound, that are able to compete on a global scale. I think our role becomes um, quite important and when you partner in events such as these ones and you're able to one share what you know but secondly also learn from other countries in terms of what is it that they are doing how far are they and I think the value proposition becomes even more important it means there is cross um, learning there is cross sharing of information and I believe in this day and age where information sharing becomes so important. You don't have to struggle on an issue when somebody else has done it. So coming together in conferences such as this to share experiences, I think it's very vital. And I believe that it's something that is going to only take us forward um, in terms of market development as well. The key message from the audience is that, you know, markets evolve. And the evolution requires that people are in touch with the developments that are happening. And it's conferences such as these that allows people to share the latest developments. And I would say 
it's imperative that people take advantage of those platforms. One, to network, two, to at least get to understand what is happening beyond uh, where they would usually operate. And thirdly, I think on just the issuance of Sukuk where people would have been very much interested to hear and probably understand what the experiences have been like or what the takeaway has been. I would say that a new market or a new product would require a lot of commitment and effort. And the objectives at the onset should be very clear. And what that does is that when the going gets rough that we've talked about earlier, then you revisit your objective and that should keep you on course and you should be able to deal with all the challenges or at least all the challenges that you encounter because you have a vision, you have an objective, you know what you're working towards. And people should not lose heart, you know, when they come across um, challenges, they should press forward. And at the end of the day, the objectives that they had should be able to realize. Um, communicate, engage, spend time and investment on educating your stakeholders in understanding what is it that you're trying to do. And I'm sure that you, they would not be disappointed if they would do that.